Hello and welcome to a beginner's tutorial in HTML. So I'm going to try and teach you HTML in about 10 videos, hopefully. Now this tutorial or series of tutorials is going to assume that you have zero experience in creating websites. So this is your must be your first introduction. If you already know how to create, how to design interfaces using HTML, then this is not the series for you. So this one is for absolute beginners in HTML. So if your dream is to start designing websites and creating websites, uh, developing and design, then uh, this is the basics. This is what you need to begin. All right, so without wasting much time, let's look at what we're going to learn in this series of videos. So hopefully we're going to do 10 videos here and this is a list of things that we are supposed to learn. So the reason I have this page on is because this Facebook page is because I want us to uh, do this, create, recreate this using HTML and CSS when we are done with everything. So this is what we'll learn here. We're going to learn what HTML is and what it's used for. We'll look at what editors to use and some basic elements and how to comment stuff in there. Uh, attributes and styles, uh, a little introduction to CSS, uh, how to create tables, how to uh, display emojis and special entities, how to create forms so that you can get user information or user input, how to use floats and of course, how to use Flexbox, and I, I think we will do positioning here as well, element positioning, and we will also learn about colors, what, how to create colors using three uh, formats here. There's the hexadecimal version, uh, HLS, Q, uh, lightness and saturation, and then we have the RGB format. So we're going to see examples of all three. And then finally, we'll have a practical page design, which is the same thing, very simple, but it's going to illustrate a few important uh, factors that we have learned throughout the series. So hopefully uh, you find this entertaining and educational at the same time. So let's begin immediately. Now, what we're looking for in this one is what is HTML and what it's used for? Right. So. HTML is a language that browsers understand. So if you look at this page right now, I have my browser open here. So in order for the browser to know that it should display this word Facebook here and this text here, while this other button is over here inside this box, all this is done using a language called HTML. So this is all just text mostly. Maybe this is an image, I think. So this is text and then the order and the styling, the arrangement of, not really the styling, but the arrangement of things here is done using HTML. So let's give an example of this. Now, in order to be able to design websites, the only thing you need is a text editor. Now you need a bare bones text editor, one that doesn't add any formatting to your text so you cannot use Microsoft Word, you cannot use Excel, etc., etc. So it must be a pure text editor, just like Notepad. If you're using a Mac, it should be called Text Edit, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I don't use a Mac, so sorry about that, but I think there's a basic text editor that comes with a Mac once uh, you install the operating system. So use whatever text editor you have. Notepad will do just fine. However, uh, we can use something better than Notepad, which has a few perks in there. And mine is Sublime Text. Now, some people prefer to use VS Code. It doesn't really matter the text editor you use. What matters is what you know and your skill level, right? So I have Sublime Text here and how you can get Sublime Text is by simply going to your browser and go to google.com and type Sublime Text Download. And once you do that, <coughs> excuse me here, uh, you can download from uh, www.sublimetext.com and uh, you have something that looks like this.
Okay, very cool. So now I can copy my text from here so I can uh, do my references right here. So I just clicked File, New File, and just pasted. I could have just pasted the information there, and that's fine. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, it, let's see how to begin creating our um, um, first web page, right? So what you ought to do is go to your desktop or wherever it is that you store your information. And uh, I'll use the desktop for now. Uh, it can really be anything. So uh, let's just create a folder called website just to simplify things. It's always nice to have things in order. So apparently I already have that. So I would change this to web page. So um, yes. So we make a folder called web page. And in here, I'm going to right click and create a new text document. Now I can do that or I can save from here. So what I would do is say file, new file right here. And then I'm going to save this file. Now I want to save this in uh, my, on my desktop. And uh, that is web page, of course. And there are two uh, names that uh, the main page should be saved as. So this one is a must. You must save it as either index or home uh, it's either an index page or a home page now you can save it as a different name altogether but because when you are building actual websites your uh, live server is going to look for a file called index or one called home so it's always just good practice to start with those two so keep in mind you can name this file anything you want but let's follow uh, the good practice and name it index.html. So the moment you name a file.html, a browser is going to recognize that document as a website. So that's all you need. And make sure when you're saving here, you're saving as all files so that it doesn't add an extra file extension at the end. So well, let's hit the save button. Okay, so we have a file called index.html and it's completely empty. Now, if we go to that uh, same folder web page, that's what it is, you see this index.html there, zero kilobytes. So it says it's an HTML document here, which is great. Then this means if I drag and drop it in my browser, I'm going to see an actual website. So since we don't need this sublime text uh, tab, we can just drag and drop the same file over here and just drop it. Okay, so there we go. Very cool. Now, if you can do drag and drop, you can always press Alt or Option on a Mac and F uh, to open a file and just find the file on your drive and open it from there. Okay, great. Now that we have this page, this page is a website. Now, what I want you to notice is, let's say, for example, we are on Facebook login right here. If I right click on any empty space here, I just say right click and click view page source, right? This is what I get. Now, this is information in the background of the website. Now, if you look at this, this is quite an amount of information and then compare this to what you can see here. So clearly there's something in the background going on that we are unaware of. So when we say view page source, it shows us the code that is actually running the page that is generating this view that you're seeing right now. So this is the information. And this information, the extra information here is called HTML because that's what a browser understands. So to explain a little further, it's better to actually practice. So let's look at a few examples of this in action. So if I come here and um, I type some text like this is a website like so, and I'm going to save that. So if I now come back to here and refresh my page, you see that I see some text there. If I hold down control and 
zoom in or command on um, Mac and scroll my wheel, it zooms in and out. I can always click here to take it back to 100%. So this is what I see here. This is a website. So this is expected because we have this text here. Of course, we're going to see it on the other side. However, the interesting part is if I type something like div and then close that there. So now I have extra information here. But when I refresh the page, I don't see that extra information. But if I right click and click view page source, I do see that there's this and that which are not visible on the actual website. So the reason this, these two are not visible is because the browser recognizes these pieces of text as special commands that it uses to display your page or your information on the page. So take for example, if we change this from div so by the way, with Sublime Text, if I select uh, some text like this, you see it highlight every instance of that text. And then if I press Ctrl D, it will select the next available repetition of the same text. And now I can type on both sides. So I want to type H1 instead of div. So what's going on here now is that I've changed the text to H1 and look at the difference here if I refresh. This is what happens. So some new styles have been added to this text. It's now bigger and bolder than it was before. So which means this text I added here has special meaning somehow because the moment I changed it, what is in here has changed. So this is what is known as a tag. This is the opening tag and this is the closing tag. So you should think of a tag as a container. It's not always a container, but it's kind of like a container. So it's a container that contains, obviously a container should contain something. So what I'm doing here is just telling it that there's a container here that starts here and it ends there. So the, the reason I know it starts here is because it has two uh, angle brackets like this and then here the same thing but it has a slash on the second one which signifies this as a closer of this one. And also the name here and that name there is the same so this one opens here and closes there it's that symbol so this is a container and it contains stuff in it okay so hopefully that makes sense now the name in the tag here doesn't really matter so this name in here could be something like uh, good like this right if i come back here and refresh of course the text will change but i won't see that good anywhere here because uh, the browser knows to use this as a command. However, even though this doesn't matter that is in here, there are a few um, uh, of these names that matter and they have implications. Once you add them there, it means something. So like I had done, the H1 means a header. So it's short for header one. I, there's also header two. I think it goes up to header five. So the larger the number, the smaller the digit. So if I refresh, this is what you see on H2, but look at H1. H1 is much, much bigger, like so. Okay. And not only that, I can use the B tag, which is right here. This represents bold. So this makes the text bold. And also I can use I, which is short for italic. So... If I refresh, you see that's what happens there. So there are several tags that are like this. So HTML is simply a creation of tags to help you do stuff, okay? So in short, we are creating containers to contain text. Now it's not necessary to create any of these containers uh, because you can have a website that simply uh, you type text and you say, for example, this is a paragraph like this. So we have a, this is a title, right? And then this is a paragraph. So I have this text here and that text here. However, without any tags in the page, look what happens. I will refresh the page and you see it just says, this is a title, this is a program. Oh, this is a paragraph, sorry. 
Now there is a website called Lorem Ipsum. So let's try to find that. Lipsum.com. What this website does is it has text that we can use instead of having to type our own text. It's just dummy text that doesn't mean anything. So yeah, so I can just copy this to make a paragraph, uh, any text here, and just paste it here. So instead of uh, paragraph, it was supposed to be paragraph here, but look at that. Okay, so all this text here to represent a paragraph, but if I refresh the page as usual, you see that the text just goes, this is a title and the paragraph just continues like that. So there's no styling on this. Right now, in order to well organize the content on your page, so as it is like right now, this is a proper website. The only thing is it's not well organized because the user can't really see what's going on. Where's the title? Where's the content, etc. So this is why we need tags to organize our content. So for example, I know this is a title, uh, so I can put, or I'll call this one a header. So I'll just say this is a header. So as I had mentioned before, I can use H1 on this one or H2, depending on how huge I want it to be. And uh, so that's a header. And once we get here, you will see what difference that makes. So this is a header and then the paragraph down here. Also for a paragraph, we do have a tag called P for paragraph like that. And so if we put that in there, it's going to format uh, the content a little bit better. So if I refresh, you don't see much difference here, but it makes sure that this is on a separate uh, container with this one. If we do inspect the page source, you will see that our code is clear from here. Okay, so this is why we use tags, just so we can use, we can better format information on a website. So with this in mind, uh, now you understand what HTML is and what it is used for. So HTML is just these special characters in here, these special tags that live in here that are used to display information better on a web page. So this is the language that a browser understands. It's HTML. So it uses that to create a user interface that you can see. So there's a lot more you can do with HTML, but, uh, this is good for a start. So let's hop into the next video and see what more we can do with HTML.